can he do? Oh, what more can Jesus do? Oh, he has laid the foundation, opened up the way. What more? Oh, can he do? What more can he do? Oh, what more can Jesus do? Oh, he has laid the foundation, opened up the way. What more can he do? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. And I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. And the Bible says for us to enter in his gates with thanksgiving and then to enter in his courts with praise. So we certainly want to praise the Lord on today uh, for all of his goodness and his mercy that he has shown unto us uh, down through the years. The Lord has been good. Yeah. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we certainly want to remember the Stanton family that uh, the Lord will continue to comfort them and encourage their hearts in this hour of bereavement, this sudden death of our beloved pastor, that the Lord will uh, comfort the hearts, comfort the hearts of the people and the family and also the, the, the members of the great congregation uh, and the lives that he himself touched. Uh, let us pray uh, for our Bible study today, and let us also pray for those that uh, have suffered loss and tragedy, uh, not only in Buffalo, but recently as yesterday in, in Texas. And let us pray for those uh, families and the children, you know, that the Lord will uh, keep his hand upon them and watch over them, and the Lord uh, put a hedge of protection about us. Amen. Yeah, because, Amen. you know, these things can happen anytime, any place, and anywhere. You know, we need God. Amen. We need his help. We need his protection. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. We don't take it for granted yes, Lord. Um, that the Lord allowed us to continue another day. Amen. So if there are any other prayer requests, let us remember those that are, are going through in their bodies, and their mind, and their spirit. Also, too, our children are going to be uh, on summer vacation. Not only the children, but the adults in, that are in college are going to um, uh, be out of class. So let us pray um, that the Lord will bless and protect um, those as well. And the Lord will save and then add to the church daily such as should be saved. And we used to hear it often. We don't hear it as often as a prayer request. Uh, that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Let's pray that the Lord will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. That we may be found doing the will of the Lord, uh, witnessing uh, to those that need salvation and deliverance. Any other prayer requests? Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pray that I had favor with the Lord. I, I went on this job interview and, I, and that, uh, that the Lord granted it. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm going to pray. Because um, in today's economy, they want to give away jobs. So yeah. if you've got a mind to work, they should give you a job. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Also, also, remember Deacon John Chapman? Yes. Uh, pray for him. Really sick. Yes. And uh, remember Minister Kitty Glover? Yes, Lord. Lord we'll touch both of them in their bodies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember Deacon uh, June Sanders? Yes. And uh, also his wife, she lost her brother. Yes, Lord. Uh, so remember them in prayer. Amen. Amen. And the Reverend Overdorf from Allegheny Western Methodist Church had a heart attack. Oh, wow. And had to have stitches put in, but it was 90% mm -hmm. blocked. The main oh. artery going in his heart, so God brought him through that. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah, praise the Lord for that. 
All right, let it be our prayer. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for this opportunity to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We ask you, Lord, that you bless and look upon each and every request that's been made known. Remember all the bereaved families, Lord, those that are needing comfort, those that need your grace and your peace and your mercy. We ask you, Lord, that you shower down in the name of Jesus, that you be the God of all peace, the God of all comfort. Manifest your greatness, manifest your grace in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you be a healer, that you be a deliverer, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known in the name of Jesus, that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your glory be revealed, let your power and your might be made manifest among us. Lord, we continue to be a head to protection. Hallelujah. Watch over us day and night, night and day. Keep us, Lord from danger seen and unseen. Hallelujah, deliver our souls in the name of Jesus. Lord, our trust and our commitment is on thee. And Lord, we pray on tonight that you allow your spirit to rest, rule, and abide with us. Hallelujah, send forth an anointing, Lord. Open up our understanding. Hallelujah, continue to encourage us as we see the day approaching. God, let us cleave unto you with a purpose in heart. Our air glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, Lord, we give you glory and honor and all the praise. In the praise in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, saints, don't stop praying, huh? for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying, for he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, huh? and his word is true. Uh, just keep on praying. 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 Uh, he'll answer you. Uh, seek and he shall find. Not in the door shall be open. Hallelujah, and you shall receive. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Let us give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah, deliver us. Uh, Lord, heal us. 
Our Lord strengthen us. Hallelujah. Lord, walk with us. I go. Walk with us, Lord. Hallelujah. Now we're open. Oh, Jesus, journey. Lord, how do we guide my mind? Uh, how many of you want the Lord to guide your mind? Oh, Lord, guide my mind. Hey, come on, shut Guide my mind. Hallelujah. Hold, hold my hand, Lord. I'll be my friend. Now, when you're in the presence of the Lord, that's when, Lord, be my friend. Hallelujah. Help us. Oh, God. Hallelujah. And that right early. Hallelujah. The Lord is here to help us. I echo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah. We thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Hallelujah. My God. My God. There's a praise in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Can you just take a moment and just praise your God? Hallelujah. Just give him thanks. Uh, just praise him. Hallelujah. And, and from your own heart. Uh, from your own mind. And from your own spirit. Hallelujah. Just take a moment and just give him glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just give him, take a moment and give him thanks. Hallelujah. Just think of the goodness of Jesus. Uh, and all that he has done for you. Uh, and just allow your soul to cry out hallelujah. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When I look back over my life, hallelujah, I just say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, because he's just that good. Yeah, I say he's just that good. Uh, and he's always made a way. Uh, he just now, now having just started making a way. He's always made a way. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord, I don't want to miss an opportunity to say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. He healed 10, ten, ten uh, lepers. Hallelujah. And only one came back and said, I thank you. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He, he blessed all of us here today. Yes. Hallelujah. We ought to say, Lord, I thank you. Yes. Thank you. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Because he's just that good. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I want you to turn with me today to the book of <laughs> Colossians. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter number one. And we want to ask our reader to begin reading at the first verse. But... To set you up with this particular book, uh, this particular book was, was written to encourage the saints of God, uh, to encourage us. And Paul, in his first chapter, he really gives us a vivid image of the divinity of Christ. And, and his glory, his honor, and his position. Amen. And as I was studying this particular chapter, it, 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 the Spirit of the Lord spoke unto me and said, you know, we really as a whole, I know we, we worship and we praise Christ and we give him glory and honor, but but as as an old, as a whole, he's better and glorious and mighty more than we can even ask or think. Uh, uh, he's so vital to us and so necessary to us. To in when we uh, 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 we can really take it for granted uh, how great and how mighty he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he's better than, than what we can even think of. If we're thinking that he's great and the greatest that we can think of, he's greater than that. <laughs> um, he's more necessary than that. Uh, he's more vital to you than your next breath. Hallelujah. That's Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he's, and he's more vital than that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
All right, as we begin to look at this particular chapter. Colossians chapter number one and verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossus, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Paul uh, is credited uh, to being the writer of this great epistle. And he starts out by giving his apostolic authority by uh, connecting himself as an apostle, uh, one who has been sent by the Lord to uh, start churches and to bring forth a revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, the revelation that Paul gives, even in this epistle, it, if when you really study it and put it all together, uh, in my mind, this is my mind, that it really far exceeds even, even Peter's revelation of Christ, even Jude's revelation of Christ. And, 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 he, uh, and the thought in my mind, it goes to Paul himself went to that third heaven, uh, and, and he, he saw some things. Uh, and he heard some things that were, were really not lawful for him to speak of. And, and some of those things that he was able to speak on, he spoke it in this epistle. Paul was locked up in jail at this time. About his life was, was about to be uh, 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 ended. And he was with Timotheus. And, and in, in, in jails that time, he was given a quarters and and Timotheus, his companion, was able to live with him. And as he begins to write this epistle, he starts with his apostolic authority because he wanted people to take it serious. He said he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. Notice, he didn't say he was an apostle of some church or some denomination, but he was an apostle of Christ himself, the Messiah. Uh, they let us know that he had been with Jesus. Uh, he, would, he had sat with Jesus. He had been taught by Jesus. And who had endowed him with special revelations, uh, with wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and endowed him with divine power and authority. Uh, that's, that's Paul. He, he was letting them know that uh, the mother apostles, they, they were with Jesus, and so was I. Uh, I was with Jesus, uh, and, and I'm an apostle and have been sent by Christ. Uh, hallelujah, the Messiah. And notice, it was by the will of God, uh, not of man. <laughs> hallelujah, not of man. Man didn't send me. Uh, it wasn't human ingenuity. And he even, I didn't send myself. Uh, uh, some people send themselves. Uh, uh, but he said, I was sent by God. <laughs> I was sent by his desire, his purpose, his will. Uh, hallelujah. The grace of God was upon my life. Hallelujah. To, to cause me to do his bidding. Uh, so he says, and Timotheus, our brother, he, uh, Timotheus, he was with Paul uh, as he wrote this epistle. So he included him in it. Now notice verse number two. He wrote it to the saints. Uh, the saints, those that have been called out. We don't, we don't use that word often enough. <laughs> All of the saints of God. We've been called out uh, uh, for a purpose. We've been, we are God's ecclesia. Uh, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God called us out of the world. And, and notice, not only have we been called out, but we've been set apart. Uh, set apart uh, why? to do the will of God to allow the light of God to shine upon us uh, to magnify him uh, to let him live within us uh, because the scripture says in him we live uh, in him we move uh, and in him we have our being that's the definition of a saint 
Hallelujah. You're going, you're walking under the authority and the will of God. Separated uh, from sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Separated uh, to be used by him alone. Uh, in your own mind, you say, his will, my hands. Uh, his desire, my body. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm called out. Hallelujah. I'm a saint of the living God. A high title. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Nothing to sneeze at. Uh, nothing to look down upon. Uh, and this epistle here was written to the saints and faithful brethren. Uh, hallelujah. You know, in these days, we need to remain faithful. Hallelujah. Remain faithful to what? Faithful to the doctrine, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah, my God. We got to remain faithful, saints. Uh, faithful through our trials, uh, tribulation, persecution. You've got to be faithful. Uh, I say you've got to be faithful. Hallelujah. And this is what this book is written to. Not to the faint at heart. Uh, not, to the, not to those that, 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 that play church. Uh, but to those that have a desire uh, to walk with God. Uh, do you have a desire to walk with him? Uh, do you have a desire to see his face? Uh, do you have a desire and heart made up, mind made up? Your heart is fixed. Hallelujah, my God. This is who this epistle is written to. Hallelujah. He says in Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse number 2, he says, To the saints and faithful brethren, notice, in Christ, in the body of Christ. Amen. In Christ, which are at Colossae. And notice, he says, he says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul says grace. That grace, that word grace, is God's unmerited favor that God extends to us something we don't deserve. Amen? We don't deserve his salvation. <laughs> we don't deserve the love of God. Uh, we don't deserve his forgiveness. Amen? Why? Because uh, we were all sinners uh, needing to be saved, set free and delivered. But, but, but the grace of God, the Bible says, has appeared unto all men. Uh, and that grace of God is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He has appeared unto us. And he comes with a message teaching us uh, that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and live soberly and righteously when down here uh, in this present world. That's what a saint does. Uh, a saint lives this thing. <laughs> um, are, you, are you living this thing uh, uh, on a daily basis? Amen. Now notice. He says, grace be unto you, and because God extends his grace, it's implied here that God extended unto us mercy. Mercy is, is we, uh, don't, we don't receive what we deserve. We deserve punishment, uh, but God had mercy. We deserve death, uh, but God had mercy. God had mercy upon us because of the grace. Uh, and that grace is Jesus Christ. Yes. And because God extends his grace unto us, he's able to have mercy uh, on us, and then we're able to live with God in peace. Uh, uh, that's, that's God's plan of salvation right there. Grace, mercy, and peace. That peace means that you live with God in tranquility. <laughs> you live with God in harmony. Uh, hallelujah. You live with God with, from the absence of fear uh, of, of, of being eternally damned. Uh, you got peace with God. Uh, you got peace with God. Shalom. Amen. Uh, and because of that peace uh, that you have with God, God uh, provides everything that you need. Uh, uh, how many of you know you got everything you need in Christ Jesus? Everything. Uh, and, and notice, notice what I'm saying. 
You've got everything you need right now uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, it's, not, it's not about I'm, I'm, I'm trying to attain it. I, I, I'm trying to reach out for it. No, in God, you have it uh, right now, uh, right now. You know, uh, a lot of people, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. You know, uh, when you get saved, God gives you the victory. Uh, you got the victory win right now, uh, right now. Uh, I, don't, I, don't have to, I don't have to pray for it. Uh, I don't have to fast for it. Uh, I got it right now. Uh, I just got to believe it and walk in it. Uh, believe it and walk in it. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm teaching something up in here. Uh, you got victory right now in Christ Jesus. Uh, and all you got to do is believe uh, and walk in it. Uh, a lot of people talk. They say, well, uh, when I get the victory, uh, no, are you in Christ? Uh, that's the question. If you're in Christ, you got the victory. Uh, uh, Christ, Christ ain't working out your salvation. Your salvation is already worked out. How many of y'all believe that? Uh, you, uh, when you're in Christ, you already delivered. Why? Because He already paid the price. Uh, uh, if you were to uh, move in a house that you bought, uh, thank you, Lord, that 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 that, that belongs to you uh, uh, and has been paid for. Uh, you don't say I'm paying for it. Uh, you say I bought it. Uh, it's mine. Uh, uh, when when Christ died on the cross, He bought you. Uh, don't we say we've been bought with a price? <laughs> Hallelujah! I want y'all to hear me today. You've been bought with a price. Uh, hallelujah. And, and the attribute of Christ and that deliverance has been given unto you. Amen. Amen. So, so you have victory. All you got to do is walk in it. Believe it. Uh, hallelujah. Resist the enemy. Uh, walk by faith and what? Not by sight. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we see here. He says, Praise. Be unto you and peace from God our Father, uh, and it comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And, and Jesus Christ has the preeminence above everything. Uh, uh, now, I want y'all to hear me when I say this. He is our everything. Uh, I said he is our everything. Hallelujah. Uh, Christ is your everything. Hallelujah. Your everything. Hallelujah. Uh, your everything. Amen. All right. All right. So, so verse number three, what's he say? We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Praying always for you. Now, in Paul's uh, epistles, he, he always starts out by giving thanks. Amen. Uh, giving thanks unto God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he always prays. Amen. He's a praying man. Praying for the saints. We ought to give thanks. Amen. We ought to give thanks all the time. Amen. Um, because, you know, when you start to give thanks in everything, you can walk in victory in everything. Uh, when you start murmuring and complaining, that's when you're going to get into trouble. Uh, that's when uh, the enemy is, 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 is trying to penetrate your heart so that he can get you to murmur and complain. Uh, that's how he works. So, so it's good for the saints to give thanks uh, and to pray to all the saints. Now, now notice, the, the, the saints had, had faith uh, and they had love one to another. That's a hallmark of, of, of being in the body of Christ. Having faith and love one toward another. All right, read. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Hallelujah. Where have we heard before in the world of the truth of the gospel? All right, read that again. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Uh-huh. Of the 
gospel. All right, now notice. Paul is praying and, and giving thanks and loving on the saints for what? For the hope uh, that is laid up uh, for us in heaven. Amen. We've got a hope, uh, as we and the scripture said, that lies beyond the grave. Uh, and it's reserved for us in heaven. Uh, that's what we're living for. Uh, I'm not living to be satisfied down here. Uh, if you're looking to be satisfied down here, you're looking in all the wrong places. Amen? You're going to be gravely disappointed. Amen? And, I, and, and, I, and I'm not using that word in pun when I say gravely. <laughs> you know, you're going to die uh, 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 being, being hurt and disappointed. The Bible says that we ought to set our affections, uh, uh, and that word affections means our emotions, uh, our attachments uh, uh, to the things that are in heaven. Hallelujah. We, we ought not to love the things that are down here. Uh, if you know anything about the scriptures, you know that everything down here is going to be burned up. Uh, it's going to cease to exist. Amen. Uh, everything that you can see uh, with your natural eye is not going to exist. Uh, it's going to be burned up. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so, so he's telling us uh, to let your treasure uh, be in heaven. Uh, for where your heart is, there is also your treasure. Amen. So when we look at this verse, he says, for the hope which is laid up for you. We got a hope, amen, that is laid up for us. And that word hope there isn't a casual word. Uh, well, I'm hoping the bus comes. I, I'm hoping my change comes. Uh, this hope is sure. <laughs> uh, and it's steadfast. Uh, uh, and this hope equates to confidence. Uh, I'm confident. Uh, that, 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 that Jesus, he's going to come and he's going to save me to the uttermost. Uh, when I first got saved, I used to wonder, go back and forth, am I really going to heaven? Uh, uh, now, the enemy can't fight me with that no more. Uh, uh, that's, that's over and done with. That's kindergarten stuff. Uh, I'm going to heaven. Uh, and I'm waiting my turn. Uh, uh, because we all got an appointment. Uh, I'm waiting my turn. Uh, and, and when my turn comes, my mind is made up, my heart is fixed, I'm going to be ready. Uh, uh, as Paul says, I'm not going to let nothing separate me from the love of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, especially in this day, we'd be a fool. Uh, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we be a fool in this day? Uh, we see Bible prophecy being fulfilled in our own eyes even today. Uh, uh, so, so we knowing the scriptures, we knowing the word of God, we knowing the terror of God, uh, we gird up our lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and, and are waiting for our hope uh, that's eternal, that's laid up for us uh, in heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, now notice what he said. He said, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherefore ye heard before in what? The in the word of what? Truth. God's word is true, isn't it? Yes. Uh, God's word is indefutable, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it's immutable. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, you, you, can't, you can't change God's word. It's established. Am I right? Huh? And you can live by it. When did Jesus describe himself? Huh? He said, I am the way. Huh? Didn't he say it? He said, I'm the way, the what? The truth and the life. Huh? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Huh? He's, he, he, he practically called himself the straight gate. Huh? Uh, he called himself the living way. Am I? Hallelujah. And, and, and notice the scripture. He said, the law came by Moses. 
Am I right? He said, but grace, which we need for salvation, and truth, which is the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, came by who? Jesus Christ. Uh, so everything that he said, uh, everything that he teaches is true. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, you need truth, don't you? Hallelujah. Uh, my God. Now notice. He said, Wherefore ye have heard before of the word of truth. And this word of truth he's speaking of now is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this gospel that we preach and that we believe on is able to transform our lives. It's able to save us to the uttermost. Amen? Uh, God calls us by the gospel. He sanctifies us by the gospel. And he delivers us by the gospel. Amen? Amen. Uh, and that's that word of truth. All right? And that gospel is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, which is the power of God unto salvation. Uh, to the Jew first, uh, and then to the Gentile. Uh, all into everyone that believes. Am I right? All right, here we go. Read. Colossians 1 and 6. Uh huh. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world. Now, now this gospel has gone out. You, you have heard the gospel. And, and those of us that have received the gospel are saved by the gospel. Amen? Uh, I mean, we're not uh, uh, saved by uh, uh, fabrications. We're not saved by, what's the word I want to use? Uh, 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 fables. Uh, this is not a fable. Am I right? Uh, this is true, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and you know, one of the main things that always come to my mind about this thing is, you know, I can say all day, I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul, amen, just like the Bible says. But, but what, what, what helps me is, I see, every, uh, uh, I see other people with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. So let me know that this is not just a, a one-man show. Yeah. Hallelujah. One-man experience. Right. Amen. This thing is real. Yeah. Huh? Uh, especially when I go to other churches that, from different cities. Uh, and see the anointing on them. To feel the power of God on them. Uh, we went, out, went over to London. Uh, and, and you know, I'm going over there and I didn't know what to expect. But when I got there, uh, it, it was the same anointing. Uh, it was the same power. Uh, it was the same word. Uh, why? Because we're under the same kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. So that let me know this thing is real. Uh, this thing is real. It's not a fabrication. Uh, uh, it's, not, it's not something that was done in the court. It's not a cult. Uh, uh, it's salvation. It's deliverance. Amen. Amen. So if it's real down here, it's more real up there. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, I can't wait uh, to get up there and rejoice. Huh? And to give God praise. To really be in his presence. Yeah. Uh, down here we only get it by measure. Uh, because I can't handle the weight of his glory down here. Uh, but when I get there, uh, I'm going to have a new body. We're going to have a new body. Yeah. Uh, how many you know you're going to have a new body? Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Body uh, and, a, and a new mind. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Where you can be in the presence of God. Uh, where you can walk in his presence. Uh, well, you can talk to him. Uh, hallelujah. I'm waiting on that day. That's my hope. Uh, you got to keep like Reg well, not Reggie Jackson. What did he say? What was his name? Uh, Jesse Jackson. You, yeah, you got to keep your hope alive. Uh, he said a mouthful when he said that. Uh, you got to keep it alive. How do you keep it alive? By using your spiritual imagination. Uh, getting in touch with the word of God. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. Uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's how you keep your hope alive. Huh? Huh? When, let me say this, then we'll move on. When, when people start to dry up, the reason why they're drying up, because they're not drawing nigh to God. Huh? If, you, if you look at your spiritual life, 
He said, Lord, I don't feel you the way I used to feel. Go through your spiritual checklist. Huh? When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you read? When's the last time you meditated on him? Huh? When's the last time you sought him? Huh? Uh, because he said, if you draw nigh to me, uh, I'll do what? Draw nigh to you. Huh? So if you, if you feel like you're drying up, the reason why you feel that way is because you're backing up on him. Huh? But if you're on fire, <laughs> y'all hear me what I'm saying? But if you're on fire, uh, uh, that means that you're doing something uh, to draw closer to him. Uh, Ollie, and he's catching you on fire. Ollie, you can't, you got a stove that's burning, uh, that the eye that's burning, you can't be burnt if you're standing back here. Uh, but if you draw close to that heat, uh, you'll feel it. Amen? If you draw close to God, you'll feel it. You'll be more spiritual. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to tell you another good example of, 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 of dwindling uh, a spiritual relationship. If, if you go on a fast, and when something's offered to you, you go ahead and eat it. Uh, that tells you something. That you ain't really consecrated. <laughs> uh, I mean, now, 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 I know people forget, uh, but, but when you're fasting, uh, you got him on your mind. Right. So you're not going to forget. Yeah. Huh? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Huh? So, so if you say you want to fast and, and, and you, you, you are eat something, then, then that means you're not really consecrated. Huh? And that's a bad place to be in. Huh? But you know what? Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. You know, don't ignore the warning signs. Amen? Don't ignore them. If you're drawing back into the things that you used to like uh, and God is delivering you from, but you, but you uh, somehow in your mind like, well, maybe I'll go back to it. I ain't talking about sin. I ain't talking about committing adultery. Uh, I'm talking about the little foxes. Huh? Huh? That destroy the body. Those things that you know that if I do this, it's gonna lead to this. Huh? And if and if and if you go back to that, huh? And you find yourself rationalizing. I must be talking to somebody here today. You find yourself rationalizing. Huh? Huh? And 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 making it seem all right when you know. Where this is going. Yeah. Uh, you know where this is leading. Yeah. Uh, then, then that's a problem. You with me? Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was talking to one guy and he made a whole bunch of sense. He was, he was out of town with his wife. And while they were out of town, she wanted to go to the club. And he said, well, honey, you know what happens to us when we go to those kind of places and we get involved in all that kind of stuff. And sure enough, he gave in to it. Sure enough, they ended up uh, in a bad place, in bad situations. Follow? Yes. Wisdom was saying, don't do it. Huh? Flesh was making excuses. Huh? You follow? Yes. If you know that a road leads to hell, why get on it? If you know that's the destination. Huh? Hallelujah. Oh, avoid it. Now, what was the problem? I'm getting off my Bible study here, but, but what was the problem? I'm going to hit the problem now. What was the problem? Why did they choose it? Why did they go that way? Lost the focus. Lost the focus. Took the eye off Jesus. What else? This is good here. I 
like it. Not studying. Not studying. In other words, stop being spiritual. No prayer. Huh? No, no reading of the word. See what I'm saying? Drawing back on God. That's what leads to making bad decisions. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. Think about all the bad decisions you made. Now, since you cried out, Abba Father. Uh, if, you, if you're honest with yourself and do a self-analysis, you'll come up with, man, I wasn't really spiritual as I, as I, as I should have been. That's why, that's why I fell uh, under the spell of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Y'all look at that. <laughs> uh, all right, go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Hold on for a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm praising them in my mind. I can't hear you. But go ahead. I was saying that the Bible speaks of self-control. Yeah. We just keep letting and letting and letting. We have no control. No control. The Bible speaks of we keep letting. Yeah. We keep letting. We'll keep going. We're going out the way. Yeah. Because we have no control over our flesh nor our mind. Right. You know, and that's what happens when, when we allow ourselves to just go and get in trouble. Absolutely. Ain't that something? Uh, we got we to gotta guard ourselves. Don't we? Amen. Amen. Yes. My foot ain't left the ground. Even though my eternal salvation is secure. Amen. Uh, but, but, but I still got to, I got to live this thing. We got to live this thing. And we as flesh don't want to resist. Yeah, come on, shot. That's it. We, my flesh. Humans, we don't want to resist. I we don't want to give in. Right? You know. I make excuses for yeah. myself. Yeah. Huh? I'm tired. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was, uh, this was years ago. I was just called to the ministry. And I was, uh, uh, this, one, this one girl, she was, uh, talking to me about an incident and she said it really blew my mind as a young saint you know well you know we was breaking up and I was there he was there and the bed was there so you know we just went ahead you know what I mean what kind of mess is that Everything was there. So I went ahead and did it. That's the match. That ain't spirituality. That's carnality. And, and that goes back to her point. The flesh wanted to do it. Blame it on the bed. Yeah. Deceived by the devil. We go a little deeper, but I won't go too deep. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm trying to let this thought go. I'm trying to let it go in my mind. So I'll just give me a moment. I don't talk about it. <laughs> Hallelujah! Go ahead. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Taking, taking also, uh, in that vein, Christ for granted. We can't take them for granted. Amen? Amen. Alright, what verse we in? Six. Alright, go ahead. Which is come unto you. Alright, can you read five again? Mm -hmm. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Alright, you got a hope laid up for you in heaven. Whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. When you hear the gospel, it talks to you about that hope. Amen? That's why you got to keep the gospel in the forefront of your mind. It reminds you of your hope. Amen? All right, read. Which is come unto you uh -huh. as it is in all the world. Now, now, this gospel has come unto you in all the world. Now, what he's referring to here is the teaching and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Him being preached. Uh, him being taught. Uh, it's, it's come unto you. Uh, what I'm talking about now uh, is a manifestation of the word. I'm, I'm preaching and teaching to you 
about the gospel, so it's, it's, it's come unto you. Amen? If I was talking about confusion, that's not the gospel. Uh, but I'm talking to you about the death, burial, and resurrection, and the hope of Jesus Christ. Uh, Christ in you uh, is what? The hope of glory. I'm talking to you about that hope. Uh, and, and, and I see now why I'm talking to you about that hope. Because I'm trying to stir you up. Uh, I'm trying to stir you up in your pure remembrance. Because the enemy, uh, a lot of us been beat down by the devil all day. Uh, the enemy uh, kind of uh, uh, been tried and tempted us all day. Uh, uh, oh, I just, I'm the only one been tempted. I'm the only one been beat down. Uh, come on, kid. Uh, but, but, when, but the gospel of Jesus, well, I got to calm myself down. I'm bending over. Uh, but the gospel, it stirs us up. Uh, it cleanses our mind. Uh, he said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Uh, you got to give yourself a good spiritual cleaning. Uh, stir up uh, the gift that's in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a praise. Lord, I thank you. Stir up. Hallelujah. Especially when you have a good beat down. Stir up. Especially when the enemy is scrubbing you, you need to go ahead and scrub him. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't give up your hope. Come on. Don't give up the ship. Grab a board. Hold on. Now wait till your change comes. Hallelujah. And it's, it's in that gospel. Huh? It's in that gospel. Notice, when Paul, he taught it, uh, put on the whole armor of God, and he, and he said, uh, having your feet shod with the preparation of what? The gospel of peace. Amen? And, and that goes twofold. That, that your, the gospel represents your feet. Your, your foundation. Amen? Have on your foundation. Have it gripped upon you. When you tie up your shoes, your shoes are on you. Yes. Amen? Everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Amen? And there ain't no shaking it off. It's that. Huh? The, the, this hope of this gospel, you can't shake off. Huh? It's that. Right. And it provides support. Right. It provides a foundation. Amen? Now, now, what we don't teach about, about the, uh, in Paul's day, those Roman soldiers, they also had their shoes, they had cleats on the bottom of them for war. Huh? Hallelujah. And, but when they go up some tough terrain, huh, they able to grip the mountain huh, so they don't fall back. Huh? And that's what the gospel affords to you as well. It affords to you as a foundation wherein you can fight and, and climb. Uh, up tough mountains uh, and use it uh, as a weapon of warfare. Uh, because if you're fighting with the enemy and you got one down on the ground, you just step on him with your cleat. Uh, uh, keep the devil under your feet. Uh, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is strong enough to keep him down. <laughs> hallelujah. And you just keep on moving. Amen. Keep on moving. Am I right? Yeah. Hallelujah. My God. All right. Where we at? Uh, verse 6, 7. No, 6. We just finished. All right. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringing forth fruit <laughs> as it doth also in you. Now. Since, go ahead. Since the day he heard it. Now. And knew the grace of God in truth. Now. The, the gospel in you should produce fruit in your life. Amen? There should be some fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of salvation upon you. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Father, you, your life should not be barren. Now, what I mean by that? What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, Love joy, joy, peace, peace long-suffering, long patience, patience, 
Huh? My brother kind of, but we can say that, but it's not in that scripture. But that's good, though. Huh? Faith. Faith? Huh? Gentleness? Did we say meekness already? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now, 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 those things should be manifested in your life. Amen. Am I right? Yes. That should be a manifestation of that. So if you're walking around with a lot of hatred, then you got to question where's the love? Huh? If you're abrupt and don't have any patience, you got to say, where's the patience and long suffering? Huh? If, if you're not easily to be entreated, huh, where's the gentleness? Huh? That's the attributes of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Also, fruits of, 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 of what he's talking about is wisdom, huh? knowledge, discernment. Huh? Under, that's what discernment is, is understanding. Huh? Huh? Where, where, there should be some of that in the life of a saint. You follow me? Yes. In other words, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I should learn something. Huh? And that's the fruit of the Spirit. I should sometimes, uh, uh, in my walk with Him, I should become wiser. Huh? And, and that word wisdom means I should become more skillful in writing, dividing the word of truth, living by it on a daily basis. You understand what I'm saying? We all have our struggles. Huh? We all have our fights. Huh? Some things I'm over here with, I'm good with, it ain't gonna bother me. Huh? You, some things you're good with over here, it ain't gonna bother you. Huh? But but those things that we struggle with over here, huh? we should be gaining knowledge. We should be gaining understanding. Uh, understanding is discernment. Huh? Knowledge is the accumulation of the facts. What does the word say about it? Huh? And then in my prayer, I'm able to discern what the word says about it. Amen. And then wisdom is when I'm faced with that situation, I'm able to apply what I know and discern yes. to the situation. Huh? You won't catch me there all the time. Huh? I, I, I skillfully know how to maneuver through it. Uh, why? Because I, I, I've gained some knowledge and I've gained a spirit of discernment. Uh, I can see it coming. I can avoid it. I can shut my mouth. Why? Because I've been there, done that, it wasn't good for me. I've learned from it. Y'all hmm? with me? That's, that's part of the fruit. That's part of the fruit. The, the other part of the fruit, which makes it so necessary, if I need that fruit so that I can help others. Hmm? If, I, if I don't have the fruit of patience, I won't be able to help my brother or sister. Uh -huh. If I don't have the fruit of faith and love, I won't be able to help. Huh? Not only my brother and sister, I won't even be able to help a sinner. You follow? So I need that. And, 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 let me say this, let me say this. I want y'all to hear me when I say this. Other people should be able to identify fruit in your life. Yes. When I walk by a pear tree, I say, oh, there's a pear tree. I have identified the fruit. I see it. Yes. Huh? When they see you, they should be saying, oh, there's, there's, there's a woman of patience. There's a man of patience. There's a woman of faith. There's a man of faith. Huh? There's a woman of God. There's a man of love. Huh? Gentleness. There's a woman of gentleness. There's a man of gentleness. They should be able to recognize and see the fruit in you. Why? Because you're manifesting. Not of your own ability. 
but through Christ. Am I right? Hallelujah. This is a good Bible study here. Oh, shine, la, 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 shine. All right, uh, D? I was about to add, not only the other people should see that, your family should see that. <laughs> yes, sir. You live with them every day. Every day. Every day. Now you make me have flashback. Go ahead. And, uh, and also a sinner should see that. Absolutely. And, uh, and I just had a person today, Bishop, when you mentioned that, told me I was a very pleasant person. Amen. Don't come from a candy bank. Amen. Very pleasant person. And that's Christ. Yeah, and I was shouting. <laughs> Amen. That's what you do, man. That's what you do. I see you perfecting your shout. Yeah. Amen. But we should rejoice. Yeah. Huh? We should give thanks. Am I right? Because it could have been had the opposite testimony. Amen? And, and, and know where the blessing comes from. Don't take credit. Huh? Know that it's him. Lord, I thank you. Amen? All right, read. Where we at? Seven. Uh-huh. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a minister, a faithful minister of Christ. Now notice this, 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 this Ephesus, He was he was a fellow evangelist with Paul. All right. Now notice he's talking about bearing fruit, and he says this Ephesus, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, right? That means that he's bearing fruit. Huh? He's, he's living something. You, you can't be faithful and be, uh, what's that word? Uh, military term. M-I-A. Huh? That ain't faithfulness. Am I right? Huh? You can't be faithful, hitting and missing. Huh? Is that faithfulness? Am I, huh? Woo! Yes. Am I right? Amen. You know, one of, one of the, uh, the greatest, well, since I've been living, I said that way, one of the greatest manifestations in my life of faithfulness is when that COVID hit. I saw the faithfulness of people. <laughs> I saw it. And I saw the lack of faithfulness of people. Now don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't want to die. You follow me? And I know we got to have precautions. Am I right? And you know, sudden fear hits you, you act a different way. Mm -hmm. But there should be a time where uh, a rationale comes involved. And, and, and where you get some knowledge and understanding. Uh, and, and you get an assurance from the Lord. And you get back on the road of faithfulness. You follow what I'm saying? Some people haven't even gotten back on that road. Mm. Huh? Of being faithful. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I heard this song. Uh, the song where you said, I haven't been perfect, mm -hmm. but I've been faithful. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like that song. Yeah, so I, that's one of my favorite songs. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's true. Perfect. Perfection uh, uh, is not connected to faithfulness. What is a good definition of faithfulness? Consistent. Being consistent. Things happen. But can you get back to consistency? You know, we're, we're unjust. I, I don't want to leave it here in this note. But we're unjust sometimes when we want God to be faithful to us. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but we don't want we don't want to be faithful to him. Amen. Two way street in it. If I want my wife to be faithful. <laughs> but 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 then I'm not faithful. Isn't that foolishness? That foolishness, ain't it? Some people, now I'm going to give you a red light. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm going to give you a red light. Men and women. If you're being faithful and your significant other is accusing you of being unfaithful, mm. then that's an indication they may be doing something. Maybe an indication. I said maybe. <laughs> so you don't sue me. <laughs> it's <Maybe>. possibility. <laughs> so, so check out their quote now. <laughs> God, read, 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 uh, 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 Ephesus, he's a faithful minister, and he gave them, he was able to see their fruit, and, and he saw a fruit of love upon them. Amen? People ought to be able to see love operating in you. The love of Christ. Amen? That's our goal. That's our mission. Ain't that right, Sister Charlene? I want them to see the love of Jesus operating in my life. Amen? Uh, and not only be able to see it, but testify of it. Am I right, Brother David? Testify of that love. Uh, that's, that's, that's a good testimony. Uh, people ought to be able to see it. Amen? Hallelujah. Read. Nine. Uh -huh. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, not cease to pray for you uh -huh. and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now notice, notice what Paul is praying for for the saints. Yes. And this is what we need to pray for for the body of Christ, the saints. That, that we all be filled with the knowledge of his will. Amen? The knowledge of the will of God. Amen? Which is in Christ Jesus. Am I right? Yes. We ought to take time and say, Lord, help me to know and understand what, what your will is concerning me in Christ Jesus. Huh? And Lord, bless the church. Lord, y'all need to pray for the pastor. Lord, bless the pastor. Uh, that he comes to understand the knowledge of his will. Uh, of your will. Amen. Because we all got a purpose. Uh, God has given us a plan. Amen. And we all have, have to know what the will of God is in Christ Jesus concerning us. Amen. Notice what he said. The knowledge of his will in all wisdom. Uh, and that word wisdom, every time you see the word wisdom in, in the Bible, it deals with skill and application. Uh, in other words, he's saying that I want the saints to know how to apply your will to their daily lives. That's wisdom. Uh, One scripture lets us know what his will is. It said, in everything give thanks. Yeah. For this is the will of God. Hallelujah. And Christ Jesus. Yes, absolutely. Uh, isn't that beautiful? Uh, and we can literally spend a whole Bible class, uh, uh, a whole month worth of Bible classes talking about his will. Uh, am I right? And, and he wants us to do his will, doesn't he? He helps us to do his will, doesn't he? Uh, uh, he doesn't want to be ignorant of his will. Am I right? 
Hallelujah. Uh, but and 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 we have to know how to apply His will. That's wisdom. Follow me. If your enemy's hungry, if he's thirsty, give him food, give him drink. That's the will of God. Uh, and I gotta, I gotta understand that that's His will, and I gotta uh, understand how to apply it. Am I right? Uh, and like I said, we can go on and on. How to love, how to forgive, uh, how, how to serve, how to serve the pastor, how to serve the members. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and I got I to gotta seek it uh, and, 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 and get some knowledge, get some understanding to be able to apply it. How many tests you from? Huh? And 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 uh, I'm gonna say it this way. I'm gonna give you a benefit of the doubt. The majority of tests you flunk is because you didn't know how to apply God's word. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm helping you out. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Huh? But when you know uh, and you have a desire to apply it. You come out on top. I'm going to say it this way as well. If, if you have a desire to do God's will and, and you seemingly fall short, God will impute righteousness unto you. He will help you. Huh? Because he, he knows you. Huh? And if he sees you trying to do it, huh? You know how people get extra credit? Uh, God will give you some extra credit. Yes, okay. And I'm a witness that, that if you're seeking to do good, all hell is breaking loose and you should be consumed, God will hold back. Come on now. Come on. Uh, yeah. uh, well, God will hold it back uh, because of your heart. Yes. Because he's gracious. Yes. Because he's merciful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, go ahead. I'm just thinking a perfect example of that is when Abraham was going yep. to kill Isaac. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and because he didn't do it, but he was going to do it, yep. God imputed that as righteousness. Absolutely, unto him. Yeah. Caught it as good as dead. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, God is awesome. When you understand that about him, it makes it easier for you to walk with him. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, read. Where we at? Verse 10. Uh huh. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. All right, now notice. Uh, a reason why you need knowledge and wisdom and spiritual understanding is for what purpose? So that you can walk worthy. And that word walk means live. Uh, live a worthy life of Christ. Amen? How I many want to live a worthy life? Amen? Amen. Uh, and in the end, I want to hear him say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. Uh, now, I'm not living worthy if I'm walking sloop footed and not me, being unfaithful, cussing, fornicating, lying, uh, can't control my anger, can't control my tongue. Uh, Got all kind of uh, gambling spirits on me? Huh? Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So I want to I want to walk word. Yeah. Huh? We saints. Yes. We ain't ain't. <laughs> hey! We saints of the most high God. We walk worthy. Huh? And, and that walking worthy doesn't mean you got the big head. It means, you know, you still consider yourself an unprofitable servant even after you've done all you could uh, and God used you to his glory. Huh? That's walking worthy. Am I right? Being faithful, being committed, that's walking worthy. Amen? Uh, Thank you. All right, read. 
that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, uh -huh. being fruitful in every good work. Now, I gotta please the pastor. Please the Lord. I got to please my brother or sister. I got to please my employer. Huh? Please him. Am I right? Now, when I'm pleasing him, that means I'm doing what his will requires. Right? Now, the flip side of that, you pleasing him to, to other people, you may look foolish. You may be talked about. Huh? You may be trampled on. Huh? Oh, y'all got quiet. Huh? Amen. Amen. Notice the scripture. Tribulation worketh what? Patience. Patience. So does God allow tribulation? And why does he allow it? He's working patience in you. Right? Patience working experience. Does God want you to have experience? How do you gain experience? Through your patience. The tribulation is working patience. The, 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 the patience is working experience. And that experience worketh what? Hope. Huh? Hope. Hope in what? Hope in Christ Jesus. Huh? And as long as you're operating in that hope, he makes you not ashamed. He'll be with you. He'll deliver you. And when you're going through tribulation huh, and patience and experience, He'll give you the love of God. Yeah. Huh? Huh? But you heal your body. Heal your body. Yeah. Heal your hurt feeling. Yeah. Huh? Huh? And he'll shed it abroad in your heart. And in your By Christ Jesus. And in your patience, you your Come on here. Come on here. And that's how. Oh, look at You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, now, here we go. What verse are we in? Ten, the latter part of ten. All right, read that again. Being uh, fruitful in every good work uh -huh. and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, 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 there that word fruitful again. Uh, we're almost done. There that word fruitful again. God wants you to bear fruit. Uh, Christian fruit, godly fruit in your life. Huh? Check your fruit. Amen? What kind of fruit are you bearing? Am I right? And you know, I'm going to say it this way. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God is real. Thank you, Lord. Uh, don't always rely on your own opinion. Because you're biased. Huh? What are other people saying about you? Godly people. But God saying about your fruit. Huh? But the Holy Ghost saying about your fruit. Huh? Holy Ghost ain't gonna lie on you. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Even your critics, you know, they, they may exaggerate the truth, but they may have some truth in it. Huh? So even in that, don't discount it totally. Huh? I'm talking about maturity. Huh? Y'all with me? Amen. All right, read. Eleven. Uh huh. Strengthen with all might. Now note, here we go. Verse number eleven. Uh, 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 strengthen with all might. According to His glorious power. Uh huh. Unto all patience and long suffering. Joyfulness. Now, if you obtain the knowledge of the will of God and, and, and manifest the fruit of God, notice it. he said, strengthen with all might. He didn't say, 
being strengthened, he said strengthened. Present tense. When you walk with God, you walk in his strength. Uh, that's why I said earlier when I started out the Bible study that I'm not waiting on the victory. We're not waiting on the victory. We got victory right now. Why? Because the strength of God is manifested in our lives right now. When you get the Holy Ghost, he gives you power. Uh, right now to resist the devil. Uh, am I right? He gives you power to do good. Uh, he gives you strength right now. Am I right? Now notice, he says strengthen with what? With all, uh, strengthen with all might. With all might. Uh, the might of God uh, in you. Hmm? God manifests in you. Uh, there's no weakness in God. Am I right? Yeah. There's strength in God. Uh, all might in God. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, strengthened with all might. Read. According to his glory. Now, now, now it's not, I'm not strong according to my glory. I'm not strong according to your glory. Huh? I'm strong according to what? His and, and his glory is endless. Yes. Huh? When God blesses us, it doesn't deplete him at all. When God blesses you, it doesn't deplete him at all. Am I right? Do we see that? Yes. Huh? It doesn't diminish him at all. He's, he's, he's limitless. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He's God. Huh? Hallelujah. So why can't I do exceeding and abundant? Above all that I'm able to ask for them. Hallelujah. I, I, should, I, I should know that I can walk with him. Uh, why? Why? Because he is my strength. Uh, David understood it. Uh, when, when Saul was coming up against him, he said, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation. Uh, let that be our words. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Why? Because there's all strength in him. There's all power in him. And Christ in you is what? The hope of glory. God ain't going to let you fail. Huh? Hallelujah. God will never let you fail. Huh? Do we believe that? Huh? The Bible says there is no temptation huh, that has taken you but such as common to man. But your God is what? Huh? Isn't he faithful? Has God ever been unfaithful? Hallelujah. God is faithful. Huh? Who won't suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. And when the temptation comes, he makes an exit, a way of escape. Uh, why? So that you can bear. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When God said, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, since we talked about Abraham, I'm going to bless you, Abraham. Huh? And he said, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody greater, so I had to swear by myself. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah. Huh? Saying, Abraham, I'm going to bless thee. Huh? And the Bible says there's two immutable things God cannot do. Huh? One is to lie, he can't lie, and he can't deny himself. Huh? Meaning that deny himself means he can't deny who he is. A God of truth, a God of power, a God of anointing, a God of more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he a God of more than enough? You've been, how many years you've been serving? Huh? 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 Hallelujah. Has he been faithful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so will he ever stop being faithful? No. That'd be like saying he's going to stop being God. He'll never stop being faithful. Am I right? Yeah. Notice this. What verse are we in? Read that verse again. Uh -huh. Strengthen with all might uh -huh. according to his glorious power. According to whose power? His glorious power. His power. I'm not surviving on my power. I'm, you're not surviving on your power. You're surviving on his glorious power. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God don't halfway do stuff. I know that's bad news. Huh? Huh? When he does it, he does it great. Huh? When, when Jesus fed the multitude, huh? the 5,000, not did it once, but he did it twice, according to the scriptures. Huh? Both times, they took up fragments, didn't they? Yes. Huh? To prove that he was more than enough. Huh? When you come to your end of hope, he said, you what? Hope against hope. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Meaning, 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 when you come to your end of the road, that ain't God's end of the road. Yeah. Huh? Huh? God got more than that. Huh? God is endless. Yeah. And when you come to your mind and say, man, this is impossible, that's when God works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he wants you to see the impossible happening yeah. through him. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, read. Where we at? 12. Uh huh. Giving thanks unto the Father, which oh, has been. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to read the last part of that. Yeah, thank you. All right, let me, let me read. Can I read? Yeah. All right. If God, God, God has strengthened you, God has strengthened you with all might. Am I right? And he did it according to his glorious power. Am I right? Notice, unto all patience. God wants you to have patience. Amen? He needs you to have patience. Right? We talked about it earlier. In your patience, you do what? Possess your soul. Huh? And tribulations work with what? Patience. Huh? And he's done it for all long suffering. Huh? God wants you to have long suffering. Am I right? And in the midst of your patience and long suffering, you must have joy. If you don't have any joy when you're going through, you're going to mess the whole thing up. You're going to murmur and complain. Uh, you've got to have joy. Uh, and the joy of the Lord has to be your strength. Uh, you got to find some joy in it. Uh, this one man had an ugly woman, uh, and, and he wanted to marry her, so he looked until he found something that was beautiful. Uh, you got to find something beautiful in your ugly situation. Uh, uh, find something beautiful. <laughs> I mean, look, 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 find something beautiful and then rejoice. Have you some joy. I know I'm exaggerating, but that's what you got to do. You got to look for something beautiful in your situation. Amen. And be thankful. Just thank God. Oh, God. Just give, give thanks all, and, and all the time. All the time. Walk around just saying thank you. Thank you. And, and you'll have you'll get some joy. Yes. They cuss me out. Thank you. They, they give me dirty. Thank you. Uh, uh, Brother Steve? <laughs> there, there you go again. There you go again with the wisdom, dropping the nuggets. In the midst of chaos, your life should what? Always shine. Why? Because that chaos is polishing you, making you shine. Amen? Thank you. Y'all remember that ugly woman now? Find something beautiful. If you going through some such, of some ugly stuff, huh? find you something beautiful so you can have some joy. 
Amen. You need joy. Scripture said, John said it. He said, uh, uh, I want you to have joy, and that joy uh, would remain, and that Jesus joy he wanted you to have. <laughs> Go ahead. Another thing we should always remember when we're going through something like that, God has counted us worthy. Come on! Uh, he has counted you worthy to go through. Yeah. And so we give him thanks. Thank you! Hallelujah. Am I right? I know he said it, but am I right? <laughs> we should. We should. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why? You got the Almighty God on your side. Why be like, uh, who was that one preacher that God sent to Nineveh? Jonah. Why be like Jonah? Huh? And, and, and power. Huh? God gave him a, a, a juniper tree. Yeah. Huh? Gave him comfort, gave him peace. Yeah. Then God sent a worm. He tried to teach him a lesson. And, and he started pouting. God said, Well, did you did you make the tree? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Wasn't your tree? Huh? But I allowed you to have some comfort. God is great. Amen. He's greatly to be praised. Yes, he is. And, and, and to help us through what we're going through, we got to have some joy. Yes. That's right. Now somebody tell me what joy is. It's a state of being. Amen, I like that. That's exactly what it is. It's not based on what I have or what I don't have. It's just who I am. I'm in him. And I'm not joying, I'm not joyous, huh, about what I'm going through. Because I hate it. And, and I can say that. Huh? Count it all joy when you call through diverse temptations. Huh? Uh, I don't like it. I don't like tests and trials. Huh? You be foolish and say, oh, ooh, this is a good test. This is a good trial. I've been waiting on it. You be foolish. Huh? But, 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 but my state of being is being joyous. Why? Because he said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. But why am I counting it all joy? What's, what's some of the reasons? Why? Because you know the results of it. Amen. I know it's yielding something. I know God is going to get glory after this. <laughs> Stepped into eternity. It's going to keep you here all night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And we thank God for our, our people that are tuned in with us. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Amen. Let's give God a praise.